Welcome to the Agents of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algie, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Hey folks, this is episode number 181, and this week we have Donovan White from Vertical Horizon on. But before that, we don't really have much to say other than... um, I would like to know what platform you are listening or watching our episodes on. Do you watch player, listen to Player FM, or are you catching us on Spotify, iTunes? Just let us know. Shoot an email to contact at agesofrock.com. Uh, the only other thing that I really have is uh, Saturday night I'm going to Indianapolis to see Iron Maiden. And um, I have not heard a single bad word about that tour you know, uh, Bruce Dickinson, according to um, one of my many internet friends. Oh, it was Keith Urban. It was not my internet friend. I read his, he had gotten backstage, Keith Urban and uh, Nicole Kidman. And, they, let, they let them backstage. And he called uh, Bruce Dickinson uh, the king of all front men or some, something to that effect. So, you know... Keith Urban's a pretty well-known and pretty good entertainer, and if he tells you you're the king, maybe you should listen. I would I would agree with that. Yeah, I was I I've been toying with going with that to that show, but we've had a couple other friends that we've been trying to get together with all summer and just haven't been able to get it worked out. So we have some time Saturday it's going to work, but if that falls through, man, if I might try to grab through, me a ticket. Holler, holler up at I me. Might try to out. get you a ticket. Hang out so, with us. Hey, big announcement. We are on iHeartRadio. So you can find us on iHeartRadio. Yeah. Along with along with all the other normal things, but now Stitcher we can Stitcher Radio, not Spreaker. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So that at the end of this episode <laughs> when Dennis says Spreaker, he really meant Stitcher. So. Well, yeah, and it's Dennis, so you know, God love you, right? Yeah. Anyway, um, so so Dennis show, isn't here for yeah. the pre-show because he's stuck in traffic on his way home from work. <laughs> yep. And we ain't waiting on his sorry ass. Yeah. So there you go. He'll be grumpy anyway. And, um, and anyway, by the way, my wife had a very lovely birthday. Good. And, good. Because uh, you had to that, miss the show. That's because why you will, we not, were, you will yeah. not see me after this pre-show is over. Until yeah, next week. Nobody, I'll be back next yeah. week. We can't stand anything longer than about five minutes, Alan. Yeah. You don't, you never get that much talk out of me anyway. <laughs> Actually, you talk more already than you talked in the last two episodes. That's because Dennis isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's so true. Man, anyway, we, we so love Dennis, more, but we yeah. love to beat on Dennis. <laughs> we do. It's fun. So one more thing. Check out our Facebook page because um, we have posted a, uh, ret- a repost, I guess, from Sunny Pooney and Podcast Rock City. Oh, yeah. About about fun. a uh, yeah about a very fun event that we did. So uh, Sonny organized this. Um, uh, what, what is it called? I don't sweet, know what it's called. It's like, kind of like a Sweet Sixteen. Sweet, yeah. So it's like a Kiss tournament. Well, no, so it's, it's not a, not really a Sweet Sixteen. I don't guess. No, not really. It's, it's like more a, of a fani- well, it was a fantasy a football. Fantasy, yeah, yeah, it's like fantasy yeah. football picks. Yeah. So what we had to do was there were. Nine teams in the room, and some of us are individual teams because we don't have friends. That'd be me. Um, and so what we did was we had to go around and we drew, and then we had to go around and pick a song from each Kiss album. And vote for Joe be- Polo and Alan Tate. Yeah, vote for vote for Sam <laughs> T. Serpent. That would be me. And nobody gives a shit about the Dennis and Peter. The, what are they? The Thug, the Tube Monsters, or Tube. Two, I don't even know duckers. my. Team I don't know what name. they're called. The thrust, they're called. Anyway, the Thrustmeisters or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, so um, anyway, go on the website, check it out because um, it's really cool, and you can vote for which one is your favorite list. You can look at each person's list, um, and it was kind of cool because you it was it was a tournament, so you had to go around. I was like in the middle, but um, you only got to pick one song from each album, and um, there were people like Steve from Steve Wright. Yeah, Steve Potter Wright from Pot, from Potter Than Hell that tried to pick three songs from one record or something like well, that. Well, now, two- I, 
from cheater, where cheater, we pumpkin were, eater. from where we were sitting over there, I'm going to defend Steve because they were going so fast and we were having such a hard time keeping up with four sheets of paper to see what had been oh, taken yeah, and what I know. hadn't. Yeah. So, I mean, there were a couple of times that I tried to pick something off of an album we'd already picked off of. Or yeah, but he actually pick picked a, them and they let him pick them. Well, that was that, that you, was you can't just blame problem. that on him. I mean, let's blame Sonny. Okay. Sonny. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. Anyway, it was a blast and their audio was on there and I haven't had a chance to sit and listen to it yet, but being there, it was funny. And I tell you, poor Gibbons, that, that Gibbons dude just got... He got hammered. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> he did. Was, he, was getting, now, he was getting all kinds of Now, for, for this thing, this happened at the end of the podcast expo after the Rock and Pod All-Star Jam was all over and everything. Everybody had left and eaten dinner, and then we came back, got to the lobby, and they're like, hey, we're going to go play this game. You know, and God love my wife. She was tired, but she let me drag her in there. I had no idea what we were even going to do, but uh, I got to, on the way back to the hotel, I was like, Man, I'm really sorry that I kept you out that long. She's like, I had so much fun listening to you idiots. <laughs> that was funny. Just yeah, giving each was. other all was, seven yeah. kinds of shit. Anyway, so on the episode that you're about to listen to, we are we have Donathan White, Donathan, Donovan White from Vertical Horizon, and uh, he is the touring guitarist. Um, he's been in the band for quite a while, so. Um, Anyway, he talks about um, a lot of cool stuff about Vertical Horizon, about podcasts. He's a big podcast lover, so that's good for all of us. And, um, of course, it all comes back to that's where it all started was Kiss. And, and for, uh, Yeah, I was going to say for those who yeah. aren't watching. <laughs> I know. I was getting there. Anyway, so there you go. And uh, hang on, hold tight, and away we go. All right. Hey, I'm sitting here with uh, Dennis, that you all know, God love you, and uh, Donovan White from Vertical Horizon, man. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. Just got back from a uh, family neighborhood, our cul-de-sac. It's a pretty, pretty good group, and uh, we've lived here almost 20 years, and we have like potluck every month or so during the summer. What, what's that address? <laughs> Missouri, where they supposedly Mama's family was based on location. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. pretty cool. You're welcome to come out. Yeah, there you go. Is that how close is it to Kansas City? Is that? Um, that is actually it's technically not a suburb because they were never annexed, but it's the southeast side, so just below uh, I-70, right? Uh, going to Kansas City. Cool. So yeah. you can get to Oklahoma Joe's pretty good. Uh, actually, and yes, they've uh, they've changed the name to Joe's Kansas City as well. There's uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> so each of them are probably 15 minutes uh, in two different directions. Yes, and, and as many as 40 other barbecue joints in town as well. So yeah, come on over. There's plenty plenty <laughs> to go around for everybody. That's for sure. All right, we got the important part out of the way. <laughs> Food. <laughs> so what have you been up to, man? What's going on? Well, uh, we are getting ready to head out for a couple weeks. Uh, we're going to do what we call a city winery tour, doing mostly uh, wineries, Boston, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Nashville, uh Naperville, Illinois. There, uh, we do have a show coming up in uh, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Oh, uh, you do? Oh, yes, cool. Wanted to let you guys know for sure about that one. Yeah. Uh, we just played Indianapolis with Tonic, some good buddies of ours for ages. Uh, yeah. We played a, a a township celebration in in where uh, upper right uh, northeast. I'm trying to think of northeast Indianapolis. Like uh, Castleton, Noblesville, Fishers, Fishers, exactly. Uh, yeah, Fishers. Yeah. All right, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's so, not yeah. far away. That's like an hour. Great. Yeah, not for, too bad. For, 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 for the, you, for Bill. Him. For you, Bill. But yeah. it, for me, it's about four, about three hours. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the southern tip of Indiana, so. Southern tip of Indiana. Well, maybe uh, London, Kentucky is for you. Mm, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, London's not too far. No. Lexington by an hour ish. Or I'm about an hour and a half from oh, yeah, Louisville, yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, and Nashville as well. We'll we'll be there the twenty yeah. fifth of August, I believe, the Sunday. Oh, cool, cool, sweet. 
I'm about two hours from Nashville, so that'd be awesome. Lots of stuff. How was Rock and Pod? Tell me all about your experience. Dude, that is oh that is God. cool. That's that's <laughs> a cool it, gig. It was it was a lot of fun. It, it's just like I said, this is the third year for it. It was um, it's becoming a it, it it keeps getting bigger and better. Um, for us, I mean, we like to interview the people and everything. You know, the people that come down there, but. For us, it's the more the camaraderie of the uh, the people who are podcasters. You know, it's our one time a year that we can get together and you know have fun and you know poke each other and <laughs> rib each other. And it, it, it was a really good time though. And like I said, Nashville is always a fun place to go to. And I don't know where Bill went to. I think he okay. He's he'll getting barbed. He'll be back in. He's still on with us. I think his, his feet went out. But anyway, no, it was a good time. So you were supposed to be down there? Uh, yeah, I was supposed to be down there. Uh, and ultimately what happened is we gained another show on the last of this little bit we had. Right. And then we did another thing closer. Right. And then uh, a buddy who used to play in Vertical uh, has another band called Reign of Kindo. And uh, they were in town over the weekend, so I wanted to host them as well. And it's about an eight-hour drive to Nashville, and it was like, oh, man, I to do all this would be really, really tight. Sure. Um, I really wanted to do that. And uh, I've been frequenting Nashville quite a bit, you know, just looking for more work or what have you. But uh, I know a lot of guys down there love, you know, uh, Chris Since and that, Aaron yeah, yeah. setting up the whole thing. I mean, that's fabulous because it's the new radio, wouldn't you say? Oh, exactly. And, you know, and that's it's one thing I was talking to. It was interesting. We, we were talking to Michael Sweet. Uh, he was over at our table doing an interview, actually, with, with Bill. And Bill is back now. Yeah, he, sorry. I, <laughs> that's okay. Man, no. we're having some problems tonight. It never happens. Well, it's, it's, it's one of those situations. So we're just, you know, we're going to we're gonna fly through this, no problem. So yeah, that's, okay. that's the way we do it. Uh, but anyway, no, Bill was actually interviewing uh, Michael Sweet at our table. And... I, I didn't realize it was his wife, but there was a woman that was along with him that was keeping him, you know, kind of handling the the day's organization as far as he had to be here, here, here. So they got to our table actually earlier. So I said to him, well, how much time we got? And she goes, oh, actually, he's early. And so anyway, he was talking. And Mike, Michael, to be a singer, I couldn't believe he was doing that. He was actually kind of not cupping the mic, but he was putting, he was like touching the mic with his lips. And she looked at me and she goes, I am not kissing him tonight. <laughs> she goes, I don't know. <laughs> she didn't know she, that. Oh no, I forgot to tell you that. She goes, I am yeah, not going to kiss him tonight. I go, oh, because he's touching the mic. He goes, yeah. She goes, I don't know where those mics have been. I go, yeah. I said, especially that that one sitting over there that nobody's using. I said, that's actually my personal mic, and that thing is twenty eight years old. It's an old, you know, sure, you know, SM. You know, it's, it's one that you can drive nails with. So it's like I've replaced the the metal part and the foam three times because it smells like beer. <laughs> and and breath and <laughs> and you know everything else but anyway so i started talking to her and she said you know our publicist told us that it was a waste of time for us to come to rock and pod and she says i am so glad that we actually came here because she said you know what she said you know magazines and media ha ha want nothing to do with us the radio doesn't play our tunes and she says you guys are the ones that are getting us we're able to get information out. She says, you know, you guys are the basically the mainstream media for all of the 80s type rockers and people that are not, you know, Miley Cyrus or what have you, you know, that, that, that you know, get all the attention. He says, you know, we don't have an outlet anymore. And she says, we're so glad that we got to come down here. And she was she was so nice. We, I talked to her for, well, the whole time you were talking to Bill, you were talking to Michael. Notice. I uh, I was talking to her and she she is a she's a sweet girl and everything and and uh, but no I I really I, and I appreciate that and I've heard that actually not just from her but other people that we've talked to on here that they this is their only outlet now yes yeah, so yeah and to to even get a publicist anymore is is pretty much getting a subscription to you know the the seventh level of Netflix where it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you have all this extra stuff but when are you going to watch it when are you going to do all that stuff right. and with podcasts what i've found as well because i don't listen to uh radio by any means except talk radio because there's almost mental interaction uh a sports talk radio things like that sure but when it comes to music 
this is the only way I discover it now right. is, you know, this guy's made a list. This guy's talked to this guy. This podcast has talked to this one. Or what I loved was your the 80s don't suck. Is Am I getting that right? <laughs> oh, my, my friend. Oh, my God. Yeah. They don't. No, uh, I know. And especially, excuse me, <laughs> it's just a tickle. I'm okay. No. The, especially when it comes down to certain media formats. Because right. a friend and I, uh, we... Okay, so cassettes are technically kind of coming back, much like LPs yeah. did. Right. Yep. Really, they're manufacturing LPs again, and they're waiting for the kids, you know, the kids to see if they pick up on cassettes. Meanwhile, uh, a friend and I, and some some smaller forums that you find on Facebook or different uh, eight tracks, are going berserk. Isn't that crazy? And, and, <laughs> yeah, and I love. It's not just nostalgia because the best way I can get. Um, what they did in the '60s was these these library music or uh, the Den music your dad used to listen to, uh, uh, Montenegro, Montovani, uh, Henry Mancini, all those just chill out orchestra albums. Right. You get on eight track fifty cents at Salvation Army or what have you, and they're easily repaired through certain tapings and popping them open and those kinds of things. Yes. <laughs> I had an eight track tape player in my car, so I know I know that trick. <laughs> one as well. He's he's gonna pop one in there. But I have well currently. Uh, oh, look at that! Right here. Wow. Uh, Kai on top that I put some money into, and that thing is a recordable eight track as well. Wow. But then oh, across, wow, that's cool. You can see across the top there, um, the, there that's the eight track shelf that goes all the way around the room. Wow. Uh, that's cool. Long media formats. Oh my just, gosh! Oh my gosh! We need to come to your house. <laughs> I guess we're making a road trip. And... Not just not just eighties and music and nostalgia, but when podcast. Uh, there's one I, I really enjoy out of Australia, and it's called Four Finger Discount. And if you love The Simpsons, which I kind of do, <laughs> all, all, all the way around the room. Uh, it's these two Australian guys giving their perspective on. They started at season one, and they're up to season 10 or so, just talking about and reviewing old Simpsons episodes, which were late 80s, early 90s. Uh -huh. So you guys, now with pretty much candy store free reign, what's the topic we want to discuss? It's great, because you can just go for it. Right. Yeah, that's the, that's kind of been that's kind of been our premise all along. You know, we we do have topics and stuff like that, but sometimes it's just like let's just sit down and talk because you never know where it's going to go. Right. So one of the episodes we have coming out pretty soon, um, I don't know if it'll be next week or the week after, but um, at the Rockin' Pod we it's did a live this Thursday Rockin actually. Just, yeah. yeah, we did we did a live. I think it was coming out this Thursday or this Michael Sweet's coming out this Thursday. I can't remember which one. The um, we did a live broadcast so people could come watch. Um, the room was filled. Um, with four people. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, filled with four people. Um, even, even our wives went to the mall so they didn't have to sit through it, That was, which I thought was awesome. Um, but, <laughs> I was probably in the stream at me. Um, but, uh, so, but we did, but, but, but we were trying to figure out what could we do that was a little different. So what we did for that, and you, and you have to watch the episode, but we took the movie yesterday, and the the premise was the three of us had to figure out if we were the guy in yesterday, what band would we want to be representing? Ah, see, like you so, know, it, um, for him it was the Beatles, really, you know. So yeah, and and the, so the so the the cool thing and what you're talking about too is at least on our show, we we know we generally know the topic. We don't share anything with each other at all before. So <laughs> it, that was the topic. We don't we don't talk about it. We don't say. Yeah. You know, now Dennis always says I have rules, but then he doesn't share the rules till we get there, and then just we're like, what, <laughs> "What the hell, dude?" Anyway, so um, and then we make him change the rules and quit having rules. But anyway, um, <laughs> but but in that and, and to your point, it's just it's just kind of off the cuff. It's very fluid, um, and I think it makes for um, and what we've been told by some people that that have you know been on our show before is it just is more of a conversation. You know, it's not it's not so rigid and all that kind of stuff and you can talk about a variety of different things right. but you know there's to your point about that's how we also find out about new music right you know we'll we will have people on like for you you for example 
that, you know, people might not have listened to a vertical horizon song for, I don't know how long. Right. And now, you know, we're going to talk about it and we're going to talk about the album that came out in 2018 and, you know, then, you know, and, and new stuff. And so will it turn people back on to starting to listen to some of that stuff? That's what we hope. We we have come up and found some really, really, really great stuff oh, that yeah. we would have never, ever discovered um, mm-hmm. had it not been for the podcast by having people on and them saying, hey, have you heard of this band called Inglorious? It's like, no. So you go look them up. You're like, damn, that is really, really good. Right. And the more you dig, you find out who the guy, who the lead singer is. You're like, well, okay, now I get it. And you find out, you know, or you, you know, you find out about a, a bunch of different bands that you just really had never, never even thought of. And you wouldn't have. But to your point, this is an outlet. And I really didn't think about it till you said that. You know, I didn't think about it at, that we get, we can be that vehicle. I mean, I, I guess it's true, but I never really put it, thought about it that way. But that's, that's great, man. Thank you very much. I, I hope we're able to help in some way to get that, 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 uh, you know, that music out and, and get people thinking about it. Well, thank you. I, I, and again, I appreciate you having me on and, and apologies for not making it before, but uh, what I would, what I would uh, button this up with is uh, I had a band years ago and uh, I named the band Mavens. And the reason why I named it that is because at the time I was, I was listening, not reading, but listening to uh, Malcolm Gladwell and how he discussed uh the early 1900s ad campaigns weren't so much about the media and radio, which was really the only prominent outlet, but once they could get the 15 homemaker mothers in the neighborhood talking about ivory soap or dove soap, and they started telling the other ones, they realized there was a bump and they were called mavens. They were the ones who were the uh, interesting way to all those people so in in my thought process podcasts are essentially all those mavens they are the people who who know certain aspects but reveal something that says this might work for you or even better because sometimes when you a radio guy real real radio guys we'll call them as in uh terrestrial radio who, who broadcast and just kind of yak about stuff feel like Whatever they say is gold, but we, as in you two talking with me or whomever, you actually give an opinion of, I probably didn't like that one as much. Maybe you should try this one, or maybe this one fits you a little better. Right. And that's kind of the approach I have to take uh, playing for vertical because tons of people still have the residual, well, yeah, turn of the century, the hits were this and they were you know, this kind of rock or this kind of music. And then you turn around to 2018 and you listen to the new album or the most recent album, The Lost Mile, and Matt has gone back to Depeche Mode, New Order, very synth-based. And for people, well, okay, our age, (laughs) that becomes a leap of, oh, geez, I can't handle that. And it becomes an accidental detraction, as in somebody, they didn't mean to do any harm, to us or to you guys or to an opinion, they just are stuck with that 20 year old mentality versus you know, there's so much information for kids. Now it just kind of washes over them. I, I have friends whose kids can't tell me the name of their favorite band because they don't have one. Right. But each of you, uh, as well as I grew up with, well, these 10 were super influential. I like talking about this era. Right. But at the same time, I like hearing about new stuff. I like hearing that things have changed because in all honesty, okay, I don't, I'm going to be very, very hard on the sleeve here. There's nothing more uh, detracting than anytime you go to a Facebook wall or a post or something and somebody says, they're still around. <laughs> By God, I hope they all are. Exactly. Because in 20 years, I hope you still have a career flipping burgers, you lame-o. <laughs> <laughs> the point being, we all grow, we right. all mature and evolve in different ways. Right. And if you can't accept somebody else doing that, then you probably have a narrow narrow view. And, and with podcasts, it seems to be this plethora of stuff. You get to pick and choose, and at the same time, meld them all together because you guys are now interviewing other podcasters right 
you know and, and the thing is and bringing it back to what you were just saying earlier you know people our age you know the bands that we grew up and loved not only did we not know the bands we knew every person's name in the band we knew where they, i mean we knew everything about that band and without i without the internet right and you i hate Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I hate that fact now because, you know, when, and, and whenever I do find a band that I like, you know, I'll, I'll delve into it. You know, I'll do this. Kids nowadays, like you said, they can't name their favorite band. Number one, oh, I, like, I like this song or I like this or there. But there's no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I can't say there's, there's no, but there's fewer people that follow a band with a passion and know everything about this band and want to know stuff about this band. You know, me, you know, as a, you know, as a, you know, I'm 54 years old, you know, I would go to the grocery store. I would read every magazine I could, you know, while I was there and pick the one that mom would let me get. But, you know, that's how we got our news. And, of course, that shit was six months old by the time we got it, you know. <laughs> and uh, I just couldn't imagine. I think it's different for kids, though. Uh, I, I don't mean kids because I don't want to be sounding like, you know, sure. the grumpy old guy. I just, you know. I'm still a dad who rocks, but the point is, I just think their their brains are different. Where, like you said, we had a passion about it because there was there was not just the moment we were in it. There was all the anticipation we had of the next bit coming out, but then all the memory and nostalgia, or you know, we got to go to the concert, or you know, this is where I met Betty Sue, or blah blah blah. Theirs is just it's all inclusive now. Oh, this is just all information. I know XXX played with this band, this band, this band. He does this art and this art and this art. But it's just kind of numbers to them. Whereas, you know, for podcasters, you're keeping this passion part. You're, you're speaking about it like it means something. And that goes really far with people like us. And again, thank you, because... There is a faction where it just kind of gets washed away with, oh, it's just another thing. It's just another thing. No, we kind of have a little bit of a legacy. And overseas, we actually do better, like in Asia and Japan and China, uh, because they're not as fickle as America. I mean, we have tons of people begging to go to the UK, but it's just never worked out for us or something like that. And podcasts, great guns you can go anywhere love it great work keep it up mm, awesome so you so you <laughs> started with the, right now <laughs> no so anyway i was but i did do some reading and stuff you started with these guys in 2012 is that right or 13 uh yeah. that right actual uh new year's eve 2011 to 2012 gotcha gotcha uh, but they were they've been going since 1990 uh, you, you, you blanked out. I, I couldn't hear what you said. Sorry. Uh, Matt started the band in 1994 when go. he was going to school at Georgetown. Gotcha. Uh, and initially, the first two albums were very acoustic, very uh, well. If you think about that, that early to mid 90s, almost acoustic driven, uh, not country rock, but just very more in depth singer songwriter was the thing. Right. And then they did a live album uh, with actually uh, Carter Buford from Dave Matthews Band. So those camps were actually kind of tight. Um, when now, and I'm not an expert on all this. Matt, Matt, it's it's his band. It's always been his band, and sure. they're his songs. So you almost have to think of it like uh, like David Coverdale. He is White Snake, but yeah. he's had different members come through, or even uh, Foo Fighters and, and right. Dave Grohl. You know, he calls it this band thing yeah <laughs> i love dave <laughs> we love one i don't know <laughs> um, but yeah dave but wears a shirt. well bon jovi bon jovi is a band but john bon jovi is the man who basically runs that i mean he is the manager of that band he is the supreme being and everybody else is <laughs> there so yeah he's the, the business entity as well as first and foremost the creative entity right and we're we're technically just touring guys um but we're in the band per se like i play guitar for vertical horizon uh he does the albums he, he still uses uh the the bass player from the 
the big hit album and subsequently since then uh sean hurley he's gone on to play with john mayer uh indina menzel who did the frozen soundtrack Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um guy this guy who does this solar view i don't know paul stanley Mm -hmm. i don't know if anybody's ever seen this guy (laughs) never heard of him Mm -hmm. (laughs) but is he that guy that wears that star in his eye yeah i was gonna say I've heard, yeah. uh, he yeah. sells he sells pumas and fanny packs now. I think and that's I what he does. The pumas. <laughs> <laughs> the pumas. Oh, a lot of that might be his signature right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> might be so there on that anyway, there. follow that story a little more. It's it's you know he had the big album in '99, which is technically celebrating its 20th anniversary. Cool. Now. I'm not saying anything about anything, just that it's 20 years old and happy birthday to the album. Then uh, after that came Go, which uh, again, had some stellar stuff on it. Probably the one I usually initiate and bring people into because for me it was a little darker, and a little harder and heavier. Uh, even on that first album, he had the studio he was working, uh, uh, what's his name, Bruce Hornsby, was hanging around and helped them work out some stuff. Sure. Chris Squire, yes, was hanging around and helping them work out some stuff. Wow. Uh, so then uh, the last few albums, Burning the Days was 2009, I believe, and uh, Neil Peart plays and writes a Who? song or two for them. Who's that guy? Is that, uh, Who's that yeah. guy? Is he, he's a drummer, isn't he? I, I think, think so. He's, he's some kind yeah. of yeah, he's some, he's some, Canadian some drummer band. dude. <laughs> Canadian, eh? He's Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How so awesome! 2013 was one about uh, you know just after I'd come in, uh, and again written a couple songs with Neil and Richard Marks is his buddy. So the the bloodline, the trees, there's a lot of stuff that people don't know and don't realize. You know, for me, I'm about the song. I love these songs. I love playing these songs. And anytime anybody asks, does it ever get old? No, for me to have a career from one song, quote unquote, but there are albums worth of songs that I love. Right. Isn't that what you would like with your job? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, especially right now with my job. I would love to. <laughs> yeah. I'm, me, it's me too. looking pretty bad recently. <laughs> me too. Been busier than shit. You know, yeah. but, but I think to your point, you know, it's kind of funny because you ask, like, anytime we've ever asked anybody, um, of that same question, you know, do you don't you get tired of playing the same things over and over? I mean, right. um, you know, and, and you 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 kind of touched on a little bit. You know, if you think about, and we'll we'll talk about, you know, think about Kiss. The last fifteen to twenty years, the set list has not changed. No, the set list for them has been the same for the fifth last fifteen to twenty years. Now there may be a song here and there, but for the most part, ninety five percent of that set list is not has not changed. So. You know, but you know what? It doesn't matter because there's butts filling the seats, and they're paying money. Yep. And as Gene would say, I love bringing money in, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't give a shit what I have to do to make it. So yeah. I think that that's that's his thing. I mean, but but I think the other piece of that too, and you know, the, you know, you know, just to be funny, but the other piece of that too is. They know that that's their livelihood. They know that's the songs that people want to hear. They know it's the songs that are going to get new people there. And you know, they we, we argue, and, and I'm sure in your shows too, you play a couple of new songs off the record. You play some songs off the middle record, and you save the last song for the best song. I mean, you're the best song for last, and that builds the the energy. And you play stuff in the middle. So you know, um, it, you know that that's just how the wheel the you know the world works. The problem is when it gets. I think some bands. Um, don't know when to stop and I think that's where where it gets to be a challenge you know and you kind of go and it's because the music's badness right it's just they're just not they're not performing at the level they were performing at before i mean look at um, i mean alice cooper's you know that's a good thing oh you know, he's great. he's you know as old as he is and then he's coming out and he's breaking out this new you know he's got this new tour started and he's pulling crap out of his butt i mean he's pulling songs that he hasn't played for years and freaking good, people out songs and yeah. 15 songs and half of them are songs that haven't been played in 25 years. I mean, that's what people I mean, want. I mean, sorry, Gene, and sorry, Paul, but that's what people want. You know, seriously. Right. And and along that line, when you have 
okay, we're a much different level of legacy on that. Right. But that's the point of a fan when they actually attach and they grow with you. Right. And then they move off into that other branch and they become the next part in the next the next album cycle. They're still more dedicated. They're still willing to take, well, yeah, I'll, I'll go here and sing the same songs, but I get a, a tiny bit more. It's kind of like watching Mad Men or uh, uh, one of those in-depth uh, streaming shows on Amazon or something. Yeah, you have 40 episodes to watch that maybe the needle has moved very little in the story. Right. But you keep watching the show. <laughs> exactly. You know, hey, Donovan, like I said, too, um, being that you're a guitar player, being that the now that you said that this newer album had more, and I've listened to it last night, it's got more synth in it, going back to that thing. Is that something that you just, how does that work with you as far as playing guitar? I mean, I know that it's, I mean, I know you're playing along with it, but it's not a guitar-driven type song. It's more synth, so. Uh, that would be one of my favorite parts of this. Okay. Um, because live, yeah, we might have that track, like that synth part, because we don't sure. have a keyboard player, because that's, that's, you know, that's another person, that's more money, that's a hotel room, that kind of thing. So and we can right. virtually every other effect, and all our vocals are live. Right. And three sometimes four of us sing and for me the energy is matt then instructs me hey double that synth line with this little like there's a little part in the song uh, now and it goes and i get to like do a super compressed almost not funk but a right and for me I'm playing along with it, but then when I get to sing, right. it's all out. It's all, end of the show. You will see me drenched in sweat. Cool. This is a fun, much more rock version than most people really comprehend when they show up. Let's and go. Matt play. Matt is a legit player. He's been a guitar player a few times. We have a friend, uh, Matt Blackett, who does write-ups for him. But Matt is you know, very succinct and knows this pickup with this amp and this tone on this switch at this spot for this note, that's what you want. Wow. And that's, that's that little part that makes you go, oh, that's good stuff, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. I, no, I was just wondering, like I said, when you were, you know, like say if you're in a band like that and if it goes to a different – a, like you said a different direction and people follow you in that direction but then being a guitar player but like you said if you don't really you know you've got a backing track of a keyboard or that synth or whatever is going along so i'm sure live you're going to be doing like you said doubling or doing some things along with it and that kind of gives you a little bit of playroom too to kind of maybe go how does this i mean do you get that option to go how does this sound if i play this along with it you know what i'm saying uh, Effect-wise, yes, but not right. necessarily the notes. It, right. It's almost, I feel, for me, that I'm playing the role of uh, Matt is seeing the lead. He is sure. doing this right here. Um, he is he's reciting the lines for the audience. He is the, the main lead in the character. And I'm in the back of Oliver Twist doing this. What is it? What is it? <laughs> barely but then when it comes to like the song chorus and the the vibe of the song it's it's uh blue man group it's we're all in this we've got this little part and this little part and this little part and then to see the four of us go becomes a much different story that's cool and huh. yeah, i just feel very fortunate to be doing that because there are thousands thousands of bands who want to be even in this position to do this and yeah albeit it's part time but it's also like again <laughs> I don't have a day job I teach on the side or I do consulting for uh, teams or bands or kids or whatever it needs to be uh, and try and find other ways to fill in the work Right. but the band is is the perks are great and the songs are great. And when you're into the songs, it really doesn't even matter. 
That's cool. cool. So what are your so when did you start playing and what are your what are your influences? Okay. I I actually started really, really late. Uh, I was eighteen. I went to a very small conservative school and I listened to KISS till I was about I wanna say ten. So nineteen eighty, right before music from the elder came out. <laughs> so Bill said you you jumped out right at the right time. Wait a minute. You jumped that out. I, I love yeah. that album. Oh, oh I love Please. it. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> Here's the deal. Here's the deal. When I was that young, we had a neighbor up the street. And we painted our hockey sticks, and we started with Kiss Alive to see who could get through the. Uh, we had like uh, sleeping bags rolled up fake drum set to see you could get through 100,000 years the drum solo. <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> awesome. Hockey sticks? <laughs> um, hockey sticks. I, I was raised in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So we would do that, you know, dead of winter, go up to the house, play the stuff, blah, blah, blah. Next album would come out. Next album would come out. Go on, do all this stuff. When I was probably, let me see, would make this eight and a half or nine uh, Love Gun comes out. I bring the record home and it scares my little brother and he starts crying. <laughs> and that's when my mom says, okay, you can't listen to them anymore. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the mom <laughs> thing. Or, you know, the imagery or whatever. It was, oh, it scared your little brother. So that's why you can't listen to Kiss anymore. You should have brought, brought home like... Um... Captain you Tenille. Run, <laughs> you should have brought, brought home, yeah, yeah. Your you love little keep... home, like, you should have been like Sister Sledge or something like that from back in that day. That would have got him to quit me. Yeah. Here, you listen to this. For Saturday Night, Lo- for <laughs> Saturday Night Fever. That would make you quit watching. Wow. <laughs> Dynasty was still in there. Um, so I started playing at 18, 18 19. Um, and uh, it was because my grandmother had passed. She had, she had left a guitar for me. It was like Kalamazoo. Wow. Small double cutaway kind of thing. But mm-hmm. Kalamazoo, if you recall, was yeah. a, a Gibson line. No, yeah, Gibson yeah. Gibson was from originally from Kalamazoo, Michigan. So you know. Right. Right. So awesome. I was like, oh this, whatever. It wouldn't stay in tune or anything. Saved up by my first West Tone because of Trevor Rabin <laughs> from Yet. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Which one did you have? It was a basically a just a one of those I mean it was nothing I mean it was like one of those plain Jane kind of West Tone and I had a key, I had a Kingston amp and a West Tone guitar but they were just was it the, was it the all one color guitar the like the body all one color? yeah it was all one color it, it was just like was a, the Pantera? I have no idea I honestly that's been so many years ago I have no clue we digress. we're going off the track anyway uh played at 18 19 but I'd always been involved in music uh playing violin, trombone, viola, singing in quartets, choir, groups. So the music was always in my head. And how I tell any student is, if you can you can hum it or sing it, we can eventually get you to translate it to your hands. Because right. basically we're telling your hand, you will make that note that you're hearing. So then you'll play it, blah, blah, blah. So I'd always had those notes. Started playing guitar, had a little piano before that. Actually, when I wanted to play guitar at eight or nine because of Ace Fraley, who who doesn't do that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Mom said, yeah, after two years of piano, you can play guitar. I never got through the two years of piano. <laughs> Bought my first guitar at 19. Went off to college, uh, played in a bunch of you know little bands around town and stuff like that. And then uh, started picking up some steam through the 90s uh some some other regional bands were picking up stuff like that and then uh i met a guy and he was going to do this solo project and at the time his band was on geffen and then uh i was like oh great this could be the one and then i ended up blowing up and then i joined a country band of all things played bass but i loved the harmonies sang all that stuff we were on the table with sony with uh, tim mcgraw's manager wow and the, the singer basically said, I can't do it. We're like, what do you mean you can't do it? He's like, I I can't do it. I can't quit my job and, and go for this. And we're all like, oh. <laughs> we, we're, we're here. 
right yeah. in Nashville, <laughs> and you decided to tell us now that eh, yeah. nah, not so much. Yeah, it's exactly what happened. Yeah, hopefully it, it would, don't get exactly the hell beat you out the door. Did you get a <laughs> good? Did you get a good yeah. beating out when you left that day? Did you go beat him out in the part in the alley or something? <laughs> Well, it just kind of disbanded and fell apart. And then we tried some other things and it just wasn't working. And then I, uh, you know, finally a few years later, I actually quit guitar for like a year. I like didn't play. Then I started a band, uh, ended up being Mavens because I loved that philosophy. This was around my space was happening and you could put your own music up and it was easy to do and you didn't need a record label and this and that and the other. Thing. Well, around from the previous thing back uh, with the guy who was on Geffen, the sound guy also had been working he'd worked with king's x for 25 years his name's jay phoebus i owe a great debt to him because he was king's x sound guy forever and around 2008 he'd picked up the vertical gig doing their sound uh he had done like lou graham and foreigner and, and oh, several cool. other well Jay, you know, I'd always kept in contact, hung out whenever he came to town, whoever he was working with. And, and Jay finally goes, oh, dude, I totally forgot. Matt's looking for a guitarist. Would you be up for it? Because, you know, the last guy's working with Avril Lavigne. The other guy's working with Alanis Morissette. I'm like, OK, great. Matt calls and it's around Thanksgiving of uh, 2011. He calls and he's like, hey, yeah, Jay tells me you're really interested in this. I'm like, I've been a fan forever. Love the songs. Uh, you know, it'd be a privilege you know, to do this. And he goes, OK, uh, you want to play a show? No audition, no nothing. You want to play a show? I'm like, well, yeah. He goes, all right. Um, how about New Year's Eve? And this was around Thanksgiving. I'm like, yes, I'm chomping. I'll, I'll, I'm ready. He goes, OK, uh, it'll be in Alaska. <laughs> and be there. Here's 15 songs. Talk to you later. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, it was. And Jay was like, you, you can do that. never this. got together before that? You didn't get together before that at all? Get out of here. Um, Man, he Scott, he, he must like have trusted one. somebody because that's pretty risky. He trusted Jay and Jay trusted me. So it, it's that old adage, it's all who you know. Oh, yeah. Oh. Every freaking day I tell every student, every consultant, whatever, it's all who you know. And that's just a philosophy that translates digital or transcends digital. You know, right. getting to know you guys, well, then you'll say it to somebody else. Well, this was good or this was bad or this was it. And I can say, well, these guys are good. They've got these episodes with this guy with, you know this producer and this go listen to them so that's the uh, to wrap up that story uh go to alaska uh it was like 18 hours flying each way uh and the the silly part was i get i get airsick like anything so i i get the it's called bonine which is meclizine much like dramamine but it's a different version and I'm like, all right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to do this gig. Uh, pop one in first flight. I'm like, uh, get a connecting flight in Portland. I probably ought to take another one. Take another one. Get to the show. Uh, I probably ought to take another one. <laughs> Play the show. Do it all right. Uh, and we basically did a sound check of half a song. And Matt was like, all right, so let's go rock. And he just had... He, he just basically said, step up, just do it. Play the show, get done. It was with uh, Alien Ant Farm and Hawthorne Heights. And I'm mm -hmm. like, this is my first show with this band. New Year's Eve in Alaska. I flew up here and all we've done, he told me uh, like in an email and in a Skype, like, okay, these are the you know eight different guitar parts that you play and then I play this. And that was it. All the other rehearsal with myself. Play the show, get done, fly back, take two more of the Dramamine Bonine, get home, realize I've taken over the course of three days about nine of these things. And on the box, it says <laughs> one per 36 hours. <laughs> Great. Do you remember the show? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Yep. All right. I'm missing Dennis. I'm not hearing you there. Oh, he was on mute. Okay. Okay. We, and and very, you you're you're a very astute as far as you're 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 watching what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> no. Anyway, and to 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 give out what what you were saying earlier, uh, that's something I've told my son. Uh, I've tried to instill in him for years, and it's like going, Mac, th- that that who you know, and, and the thing is, is always be. Be honest. Be, I mean, do your best. You know, just treat everybody good because you never know somebody you can, you know, you're nice to or you do something good for could be that person that's going to be the guy that's going to be say something good to you. You know what I'm saying? Or, or bring you up or say, hey, I know this guy Dennis or you know my or my son Max, and he's a great guy, and give you that opportunity. And those opportunities, like you said. The opportunities don't fall in your lap. You got to earn those opportunities. I mean, and it's and it's a fact of that your friend knew your you know knew your ethic you know your work ethic plus your playing, and just and he took that as gold. I mean, that's that's an unbelievable story to be honest. Well, thank you. And yeah. it was fifteen years in the making. Wow, that's an awesome. Yeah, that's an awesome story. Him, I've known him since ninety four, but he hadn't seen me play till ninety eight or so right. with this other things and then ultimately it was like oh yeah and it's a little bit different because the story is also uh i'm in kansas city and have not left i'm still in kansas city and we basically fly to the show we all meet up there uh drummers in nashville bass players in rancho cucamonga uh tour managers in austin texas uh jay who, who was doing sound is in Mississippi. Now we have a, a, another guy, Blake, who's in uh, Palm Springs. And Gabe uh, was his buddy as well. Gabe was tour manager for a while. So Matt also trusts us to show up and have these songs ready. Sure. He's like, and a lot of bands, you know, they need a week of rehearsal before that. And they need, you know, they need to hang out and really get to know each other. And we, I don't know what it is, the psychology of it or whatever, but we fly, we show up, we hang out, we have a good time, we have some hard times, we have some weird, weird stuff. We could go down a rabbit trail, but it's just working. Right. And still working. And after 20 years that these songs are working, and after another year, new songs are out, and he's already working on another album. Awesome. And it's, again, very fortunate, very pleasing that I get to do this. Cool, man. That is really cool. Awesome. So, where can where, what do you? So, when you're not working for him, you said you you teach music. You and uh, I, I saw too that you're involved in your church and that kind of stuff too. So, you do some ministry work. There is a uh, I'm going to call it a chain of churches, but it's not like uh, Chick Fil A. Ch- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not Burger King. It's just it's just a type of church. Yeah. It, what I was doing as well was consulting churches on how to make their worship bands better oh, cool. because oh, that's what I yeah, that's what I read that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. And there's probably, uh, the best example I can give of this. If you've ever seen the King of the Hill episode where Bobby joins a Christian rock band <laughs> <laughs> and Hank basically says, Bobby, it's not that you're making rock and roll any better. It's making Christianity look bad. <laughs> <laughs> not only was that funny, that was a spot on. Right <laughs> off, man. And I have a correction. I think I got it reversed. I think he okay, says, "Do it again, Christian. Any better? You're making rock and roll look bad." So <laughs> that was, that was funny the other way. Though. I like yeah. that. <laughs> Oh, shit. And yeah, Sorry. I do. I do like the voices a lot. So you know, we'll talk later if you need bumpers. And, <laughs> and but uh, when I consult the church, I'm basically trying to get them to say, "All right, yeah, you might be using volunteers, but you're trying to get X. You're trying to get this level up here, and you've got this level of player here. Where are you going to meet that?" Like dealing with your son, Dennis, right. I'm sure you're thinking, well, if he would just do this, practice, 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 and do this and this and this, 
Because I, I, mean, I guess you're you're a guitar player as well by your guitars back there. Well, yeah, I play everything, and I can't get my son to play anything. It was one of those things where I told him I I have the you know, like I said as a as a kid I never my family was not musical whatsoever. The piano that's sitting over there that was my grandmother. She bought that before she passed away, and I I inherited that. And like I said, she was the only person that could do any kind of music. Um, I had to earn everything that I did. I had to prove that I could play to get instruments. I had to beg and plead to be able to do this. So when my son, you know, when, when Max was born, I was like going, he has everything. You know, I had a drum set. I had a key. I'm like, and I told, but I, but I told Kelly, my wife, I said, I'm not going to pressure him anything, but he has the opportunity. And every once in a while, I was like, Max, hey, if you want to do this, no interest whatsoever in music. And I'm like, you know what? I mean, and that's his thing. And I'm, I'm not going to sit there and be like this baseball guy, you know, these guys that take their kids to baseball and t-ball and just, you know, berate them and, and beat, you know, just beat them to death and try to and make it miserable for him. If that's not his thing, it's not his thing. So I, I it's one thing I, I just never did. But you know. and it's very funny because I'm the exact opposite. I have very little musical talent. I do have some. I'm singing. I can sing and most of but my but my son, I can't play. But my son, my youngest son, can play anything. Right. He can play. He just play. He plays drums. He plays keyboards. He plays some, some keyboards, but he plays drums. He plays guitar. Sure. He plays acoustic. He plays electric. He just picks it up, and starts playing. And I'm like, what the hell? It like totally. I don't know where you got it from, but it did right. not come from me. So it, it just it's it 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 is really you know they talk about it being a gift. It is truly a gift to be able to do that. I would love to be able to do that. I just. Right. He just has this ear, and he can just sit down and start playing stuff. And I'm like, man, I could never do that. So. And Donovan, and you mentioned something earlier too. That's that's something that I've never, and you explained it actually probably better than I've ever explained that anybody's ever tried to explain it. As far as the fact that I can't read sheet music, tablatures do me no good whatsoever. But if I hear a song, I know how to play it. You know, I'm not I'm not a great lead player, but rhythm wise, I just know that's I know I hear a note. It's right here. For a while, what note is that? Well, uh, what note is it? I don't know. It's a okay. It's a one, two, three. It's a D. Okay, you know. But the thing is, I don't. And I've tried to explain that to people of how I do that. I, I I just can't do it. But the thing is, I just hear something. I can hear it on the radio five hours previous. Come home, it's in my head, and I can sit there and play it on my guitar pretty damn close to what it was on the radio you know what i'm saying and it's just i just know i see notes in my head and that's weirdly weird i don't know how to explain it to people well it's better than dead people it is <laughs> don't see too many dead people. but like you were saying though you 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 were saying that we, we're going to work with you and make you when you when you hear this note you're going to know what to play it and that's exactly what i do and i don't it's it's hard to explain to people it really is yeah and it's much like any other job. You you have a skill set, and you just know what you can do. Right. And then you realize, what can I push myself to do? Mm-hmm. And then it's okay to fail. I failed a lot. I, didn't, mm-hmm. I turned 40 and joined a rock band is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 42, 41 when I played my first show with Vertical. Wow. And that was like the first real band like that right and for that some people the first real band i mean that was the first big like there was no other touring band before that there was no band that did gig i mean that did regular gigs on a routine basis at a it, that was really your first kind of big big deal um i did a lot of regional stuff nothing yeah. that was natural yeah. And nothing that anybody would know outside of, you know, the tri-state area. The kind of Let stuff alone, that I do. <laughs> you know? There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, there's no, different yeah. levels. Right. right. And, but it was also a, a faction of, like, the guy I played with Geffen, got screwed over. Country band, got screwed over. My own bands, got screwed over. Right. And we're talking, like, thousands upon thousands of dollars of, you know, the normal 80s record label stuff to all those bands. Happened to me without the record label. It just happened to me. Right. So going through all that, and even now, if you ask most of those guys from that era, they will tell you this current situation where we show up, 
we know the fans are there for us. They want to hear our music. We come in and they set a table for us, literally. They'll give us a meal or they'll give the rider or whatever. And there isn't that stress of you got to give us a hit, you got to give us a single, and you better work, 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 work. Right. Those bands, Michael Sweet will tell you, yeah, I love to work. He's a workaholic and he loves that. And he takes his band out and his band will tell you, yeah, this is great because we get to pick. We're going to play this many shows and this is what we're going to do. You can't dictate to us that it's this slamming or this hard. So previously, regionally, yeah, I was always ascribing trying to be that next level and ready to do that next level. Hmm. Much like anything, when you're doing an apprenticeship for plumbing, you're doing an electrical thing, you're, you're a programmer for IT, you ascribe to a certain level, you keep working at it, you're going to get there. Uh, when it comes down to doing other facets, the business... I don't have to do any of that, and I'm more than thankful. <laughs> so, how many how many gigs you know, are you guys doing a year? Then, what, what what are you doing? What's your average on yearly? Our average gigs? is about fifty five to sixty shows a year. That's that's good. Yeah. And good. we've done package tours. Uh, like when I first came on, we did a, a large package tour. It was uh, Smash Mouth, Sugar Ray, Jim Blossoms, Fastball, and us. Oh, that'd be a good. And show. that was literally like a hits fest and that was pure summer camp for seven weeks it was unbelievable <laughs> it'd be fun <laughs> and then now uh, we tour a lot with tonic some good buddies of ours uh dishwalla collective soul goo goo dolls uh last summer we did uh tonic and gin blossoms and i was very fortunate i got to play three shows as a gin blossom wow fun chip you the guitar player uh we've been buddies for a while and he's like hey man my son's graduating you want to play I'm like okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> set me up <laughs> you're already there right you never yeah <laughs> a year before was with everclear and fastball probably one of the best tours ever because it was like early spring the northern states back and forth and then a few texas ones in there in may uh, it was it was just gorgeous and you got there before the heat got there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Big time. Uh, and that, that was another great tour. So, yeah, I've already su surpassed, like, tons of my peers who were on labels, who've done the thing and got roasted, and then now they're jaded, and they're mean or mad about yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm, I'm in a position and a, a, a mindset of, I, I get to do this. I'm, I'm yeah, next week. Yeah, I'll be only in a van this time, but I'm with my guys. And we get to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to see this place, and I get to see this. I've literally been around the world seven times with this band. That's awesome. That's yeah, cool. That is awesome. I could, so talk I could... a little bit about so talk a little bit about so you said you had some shows coming up. We we need to get we need to let you go here pretty soon. Yeah, so we're getting been, yeah, we're getting yeah, about an hour or so. Yeah, we're good. Sorry. No, I no, 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 no. Yeah, no, it's, just, it's been a fun time, and yeah. you know what? To make sure we're, we're respectful of people's time. So exactly. Um, so talk about uh, kind of shows you got coming up, and then where people can find the band and you and that kind of stuff. Okay, so the shows coming up are the last two weeks of August 2019. Uh, it'll be New York City, Washington D.C., Atlanta, Boston, Nashville, Lawrenceburg. Lawrenceburg, London, Kentucky. It'll be Way a lot to go. of go. Way to go, Bill. Yeah. Awesome. I heard, awesome. I was listening. So is there so is there a website you can go to? I'm sure you go to the Yes, it's verticalhorizon.com. Gotcha. All the stuff is there, even even if you need to book the band. It it gives you the uh, booking agency, all that stuff. Um of course, you can YouTube virtually all of the videos. The one you should YouTube is uh, from the album Echoes from the Underground. The song is called Broken Over You because it was my first rock video and I had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> You're teasing That's like cool. a, yeah. <laughs> it, it was unbelievable because it was uh, it was done on a tour on a day off. Right. And it was in a warehouse in Los Los Angeles in the middle of July with no air conditioning. 
And if you watch the video, the, the light staging, it ended up being, I believe, 36,000 watts. Wow. Fighting fiction. The video seal this giant black flashing. And uh, we were there for 10 hours wow. because there were just some snafus happening. And we did that take over and over and over again. And if you'd told, you know, 14, 15 year old version of me, hey, this is what you're going to be doing when you're, you know, 43. <laughs> What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, let's do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, that was broken over you. But yeah, you can usually find if you just do vertical horizon live wow. and then the year 2018, 2019, 2017, you'll see that version of the lineup, which has been pretty steady now okay. for a while. Awesome. Cool. Um, and uh, we go to town, we have a blast. And, you know, there's the hits, they predominantly show up in the feed of YouTube, but if you look for one specific song, you'll probably find a version of it live somewhere. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, Donovan, like I said, thank you so much for being on. And like I said, we'll uh, stay around for a minute. Like I said, once we get off here, we'll talk for a second once we get off. Um, But like I said, we'll, you can check out ages of rock on the, on Spotify, on YouTube, on was a Spreaker. Does I get it right, Bill? It's on everything. It's on everything. I saw, I saw it on FM something or other earlier. Yeah, I did. It was actually it's a new one. And all kinds of places. New one. Great. I mean, and we've got yeah. a lot of videos coming up and a lot of great stuff coming up. But like I said, just, and go to agesofrock.com. And you can get everything there. So there it's you easy. Go. So Bill and I will say bye. And Alan will be back next week. And we'll talk at you later. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.